hey guys welcome back again to another new video it's your girl Lina tamimo and today i'm back again with an interesting video today i want to talk about my life experience as a nurse because many of you come here to germany and then there's nothing else you want to do you want to try and do all of you just do fsr and then you just think of oh let me apply for nursing and this nursing mostly is this alton flagarin and those people who do crank and flagarin are those people who, who get their visa without any problems but mostly are those like right now we don't have that alton flagarin right now we have flaggy fuck man and flaggy fuck fro but it's still nursing so today i'm going to talk about this nursing for us blacks here in germany and how my experience has been and how i've been feeling since i started doing this house building like um yeah, again, I'll discuss until right now. So let's go to the video. So today I'm going to give you my story, how it has been. Now, like you have known me on this channel, I spoke about how when I came to Germany, what I've been doing. So after I did my FSJ, like that is after doing my my volunteer work i applied for house building like this nursing course and that was like 2012 they denied me of course visa because they said they've been giving me a lot of visa i, I spoke about that thing in my other video if you can go and check on it i want to put the link there so anyway guys at the end they gave me the visa and then i had to start my house building here in germany that was in april 2013 after finishing my uh, nursing course, I applied for work where I was doing my house building because okay, three of us were supposed to be taken there, but they only took me. So I took advantage of that and then I stayed there and then they gave me my permanent residence. And I was so, so happy. But guys, that was the beginning of trouble because you are very desperate to just graduate from nursing and then they take you to a, like an intensive care unit whereby you have no experience, you understand? and people are dying every day you know it was like palliative people are dying you're scared like you know you of course you can see a dead person during during your course and during these three years but right now in the in the palliative in the intensive care unit a lot of them are dying like today one of them will die tomorrow two of them and that was like overwhelming for me like i just thought what am i doing with this what am i doing here why am i working here and when I spoke to my boss, she was like, the boss, she didn't want to understand me. I told her I cannot sleep well. Of course, I just graduated. And for me, that was too much for me. Like everybody, every day, someone dying, dying, dying. I was like, I mean, the, why am I working here? Like, I know I'm a nurse, but I, I, I want to work in a certain department, you understand? So I asked my boss if they can change me to another department. And of course, she said no. Then I had to change work. To another a place and before I even change work where i was working already like you as a nurse you don't even feel as a nurse you're working with people who are flaggy like nurse assistant like guys this nurse assistant are the worst people in the in the nursing like everywhere you go if you go to the nursing home especially you know if you go to the kranken house to the hospital is much better when you work with nurse assistant but when you want to apply for work in the flaggy home, like Altesai, where these people hold, people live, you will never have peace of mind with this old flaggy assistant here in Germany, especially in the Altesai. Like, even if you have graduated from school, you can, and maybe let's, for example, you are doing your nursing in that uh, station where you are, and right now you have graduated. They don't care. They just treat you like a student. And, uh, yeah, that's what they were doing to me, guys. And I know many of you people are going through the same thing. And my advice to everybody going through the same thing, once you have done your house building, kindly go to and change your station of if you have graduated. Because if those people who are working with you there, they're still going to see you as a student. Nobody's going to see you as a far craft, like a, as a nurse, as a qualified nurse. Most of them will see you as a student. They'll be telling you, no, you, even if you want to tell them something, you cannot tell them something. You'll be like, now you've done your house building, now you want to command us, you know? Like this flaggy assistant these old ones they want to think you think even this uh where you're working is their home they command you anyway let's go back to the topic i changed the the workplace i went to another workplace and guys this is where racism started this is where bullying started and it was not only to me it was only 
it was for all the foreigners even if you're black you're whatever even if you're white but you're a foreigner the VBL there and other nurses who are like 50 years in the same place were horrible they were like commanding us they were like treating us as nonsense and then like, for example you come to dean's or someone will just get in they'll be changing their faces like guys that's why i said i cannot do it i just said for like six months and then i got pregnant because i just said i need an like i need an off i was really tired you know you change work you go to another place and then you find it's like why am i oh my god why did they come here so when you come to germany and work in such such places things like this are going to happen people are very racist so in every in every uh, station we always have someone like a like a boss of all the nurses in the station only because there are always two bosses up there we have also bosses of our where if you have problem in the station you can go and talk to that person so now imagine the one who was responsible for all the nurses where i was working was a racist one you could, as a german racist woman you could never tell her anything she used to bully everyone people were just going kundigung kundigung resigning resigning I got pregnant and then almost five people got pregnant after me because the work was just not doable. You, when you go to work and somebody is like, doesn't really want to talk to you, you cannot work with that person. People are making sick of, because people are just tired working with the same woman, you know. So that's what we did. And then many of us, were, many of many, many of, uh, people were pregnant after me. And then that's how that woman left that place. But before she left that place, I was also done with my maternity leave and I also left that place. So guys, Right now you can see my first job, my boss took me somewhere, I did not want to work and she didn't want to understand me because I was still new as a, as a nurse and she didn't want, she was giving me too much work which I was not even capable of. And uh, you, you as a nurse, if you do something that you, you're not ready to do or you do something wrongly, you can also be sent to prison because of that. So I had to change and then when I changed, I went to somewhere else whereby I was like, I was being bullied. You understand not only me but all the other um, foreigners are also bullied so this is the second place where i went to work and then i said let me change work again and go and try and do because i had my son now as coming out of the maternity leave i said let me go do this ambulante this ambulante is the one you go to people's houses to go and maybe let's help them and that was very very nice but the boss was horrible the boss was like now wanting to command me, where were you these two minutes? You're, you're supposed to drive. So now imagine you're doing this ambulante dienst and you have to drive on the road. And there's traffic sometimes. There's this out, uh, this glow, big lorries, they have trash in them and they are very large. And, they, and you know my town, the streets are very, very small. So you have to let one car pass and then you can pass. So this woman did not want to understand me and I got to a point whereby she was even telling me, instead of driving at 30, I'm supposed to drive, drive at even 40 or 50. If the police catch me, I can only pay fine, and fine is very cheap. You know, that's what she was telling me. Then I, I told her, I told her, so, to, sorry, I cannot do this work because my life comes first. If I get an accident here, you know, I'll be the one who, I'll lose, my son will lose me, I'll lose my life, I'll lose my leg, or for example, I'm going to be the one who's going to lose. So I told her I cannot do such a thing. This is my, my third job whereby things didn't go well and guys if i many people can talk here is a lot of people going through that so i left my third job after six months and then i found a new job it was in the hospital this was really really amazing guys i learned through a lot i learned a lot of things you understand but before learning a lot of things there's also a situation by whereby the first three months we were like three people who were new there we started in january and we were new there three of us and we did not have any experience of the hospital so almost we almost gave up but in between we just said no we cannot give up let's continue and see how it's gonna be so in the kranken house like in the hospital working in the hospital is horrible guys it's nice you once you once you catch up with the system it's nice but the startup point you have to start with everything you want to know the, how they're working how they think how the shift is going like that's why you feel like crying so when you we was we were new and we were just pushed to go to one station whereby we did not know anything guys i'm telling you nobody wanted to assist us on anything you understand guys imagine three of us you are like alton flagarin you are like you are qualified nurses here in germany and you're in the hospital you're being told with your boss because we, are, we have not opened our department where you're supposed to work you have to go and work in this department the three of you 
So when we went there, the, the some people, were, there some nurses were told they have to teach us how to work, how to do this, how to do that. And those nurses, they never cared. Like they left us to go and wipe asses. Like our first almost three months in the Kranken house in the hospital, we were just wiping people and washing people. Like this, like the normal thing that took you there, you want to learn how to do, how to make the medicines, these antibiotics in the, in the bottle. You want to know how to mix them and all those things. We never did. We almost did almost after six months. That's when we were saying to do. Because it, is reached, it reached a point where we told our boss, you cannot continue like this. You have to now do also something. And then that's when they started showing us. And then another thing in the hospital, when you go here, like you just came in, once you're a black person, they don't see you as a land person. They just see you like, oh, chula, student, practicant, you understand? You enter somewhere, they, they like look at you like this because they don't even think like you're a qualified nurse. This is something that happened to me and I saw it in, in not even only in one Kranken house. In another Kranken house where I worked, it was the same, same thing in, the, in that hospital. Like nobody sees a black person as a qualified person who has done something, like learned something. And once, the, even these doctors, they don't want to like do visit with you because they think you are a student. And once you tell them, no, I'm a nurse, they're like, oh, okay. And then they, you see, they treat you like differently. But before they knew you were a nurse, they were like, they don't want to even talk to you. So that is what is happening in the Kranken house. Someone will just leave you a nurse here and go and talk to a black, uh, to a white student. And you are the nurse and you're a black. So racism is very, very high in the hospital. Nobody's going to bully you, but racism, you see it from people's faces. You understand? And then, guys, I changed work. I worked there for almost one year, 11 months. But then I had to change because it was too, too far. But I loved that one. Hospital was my best. I, even up to now, I miss the hospital because I'm working somewhere else. Because my husband had to, had to work with the hospital shift. You can, and uh, you also have a kid, you cannot work the way you want to work. So we had to change that because of the working system. And then I went to this Altes Heim, the heim like home for old people. This is where, guys, I want to tell you everything about racism that happened to me. You know, this Heim, like, really, really made me so angry. I was, like, desperate. I didn't even know what to do. So I read, rev I read reviews about this Heim this home and then i said ah right now there's a new boss a man who sees who looks serious as a boss let me go and apply for like let me go and apply for that work and then i went to that work i started doing i started doing my work in feb and um everything was okay everything was okay because we have three floors in that time and i was given the hardest floor to learn to learn the hardest floor you know, like when, let's say, for example, I do night shift here, and then the boss tells me, Lynette, someone is coming, you have to teach her work. And probably we have three floors, like, like here, the same place was like that. So I, I decide to take you to another floor where it is very hard. That is what they did to me. And then I started working on that floor for almost two months. They had a station, and I didn't know it was the hardest station because I didn't go to the others. On one particular day, I came for my shift, and then there was this Cameroon woman. She was like asking me, Lynette, why are you always doing this first floor? This is very, very hard for you. Like, it's, a, it's the hardest station. If you do it alone, it's going to be hard. It's very, very hard. You need to change. And then I asked her, so which one is the easiest and which one is the light, like the best place to work? Or, or, or like, then she explained to me, hey, you have you know, the second floor and the, the other floor is very, very easy. They don't like, have like six people to change diapers. And me, for example, me where I was working in the first floor, I had like almost 20, some pe 20 people to change the diapers. Of course, if someone has, has six people and you have 20 people, you see the difference. For me, it was too much work. So, and then I, the next day I told them if I can exchange and go to the second floor or, or underground floor, another person can come to the, to the first floor. That, guys, that was the beginning of problem because once I just say I need to, under, to change, and imagine you are telling your helper, nurse assistant, after telling this man, this nurse assistant, that I, I want to change, this guy got angry with me. Like he, he was like, he doesn't understand. But he did not tell me, but I saw in his eyes, he was angry with me. So he did it, but he was like, no, he, did, he don't like it. But I told him, you have to exchange. I don't have any choice. Also, me also, I also want to change. Then, so next time when I came to shift, I told him also, I'm going to do the other ground floor. 
now, now I did the second floor, now I told them I want to do the ground floor. And I realized it was not okay for them. They were like, because for two months you have been, you people have been resting, have been working. So why can't we, why can't we exchange? And then that's how problems started. This man will tell him something, will go to this, your, your friend, maybe there's a girl, there's one girl I like so much, she was my friend. You go to this person, you go and exchange her so that you can quarrel also with this person. And then there's a time I was even sick for like one day. This nurse sister will go everywhere complaining to everybody that I'm always sick. You know, guys, when you apply for work as a mother, you can be sick, your child can be sick. That means when the boss takes you to work in the place, that boss should know even if you're not sick, your child can be sick. You understand? So this man was like, he doesn't even want me to be sick. And he's a helper behaving with me like this. So they went and reported me to the boss and the boss was like a, rest, a racist boss. She did not want to understand my point of view. You understand? This guy, this assistant was like, I've been here for seven years. You've been here only for a few months. You cannot tell me this. All this problem started because I spoke. And once you speak here in Germany, that's the way the problem stands. These Germans, they don't like being told anything. Yeah? And this is the reason why I'm always telling you. Here in Germany, mobbing. Like, for example, guys, this what this man was doing. He was more, it was mobbing. You cannot go and complain to everyone that Lynette is always sick. Who is always sick? And even if I'm sick, are you the one paying me or is the boss paying me? How are you related with the company that even if I'm sick, it's paying you? But to you, when you're sick, nobody is supposed to talk. So anyway, guys, this, this, um, this is a private, that was a private time. And I'm very, very happy that I, I resigned from that time because uh, maybe right now, maybe I would have gotten burnout or something else. You understand when you, when you go to work and somebody is already spoiling your name to other people, you know? Maybe he thought like, ah, this, if I do this to her, she'll be deported back home. He forgot that, for example, I have my own stay here. I can change work. And he forgot that I'm a nurse. I'm a qualified nurse. He's assistant. He can never even change work. If you change work from that place, you'll never get another work where you'll be sleeping. And then to make the matters worse, that boss was an Indian boss, an Indian woman. She was a real liar. You could not tell her anything. You would even tell her you put this, this pen here for her to see tomorrow. She would, tell, she would take it and tell you she would not see that pen. Hey, how much she has been lying. Even there's a day I went to my shift, guys. I went to my shift. I did my night shift. Can you imagine next month I did not receive payment for that one day? I went and confronted her. Why did I not get money? And she's the boss. She's telling me she doesn't know why I do not get money. Oh, I do not. I, you are not in the shift. I told her. So who was signing for me in the computer when I was not? I when I was at home. Nobody has my password. So who was signing for me? So these are the things I was telling you about. That has been my bad experience here in Germany. That I even feel like giving up with nursing. You know, understand? Like right now where I'm working. Right now I'm working um in a Catholic department and like institution and. The, the work is okay. The work is okay. The boss is straight. There's nothing like this and that. No, 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 no. And people, even workmates, you know, they are, nobody is here talking about this. This one is that. This one is that. No, even if someone, people are always sick here and nobody will come and complain about those people who are sick, like to other people. Yeah? If the boss cannot complain, so who are you? Why are you complaining? People are sick. Why will you go and complain to other person that this person is always sick? Yeah, the boss is supposed to be the one complaining. The boss is complaining. Who are you to complain? So anyway, these are the things that turns me off really while in working here in Germany. I don't have any understand what where this nursing is heading to. I don't understand to be honest. So my plans, my plans are I don't know if I'm gonna stay here for long. That is something that I'm not sure about it because I don't want to do night shift anymore. From next year, I want to turn, I uh, want to stop doing this nursing because, first of all, even if I'm, even if I'm not working, I'm always very tired. Even if I'm free, I don't sleep at night. I'll be sleeping at 5 a.m. And then, like, it's like I'm working and I'm not even working that day or the next three days because after work, I'll be still be tired. And that's not the type of, I have a kid, I need to play with my kid. I cannot do because I'm very tired from, even if I'm not working. So anyway, I'm planning on something else, but I'm going to tell you soon. And guys, tell me about your experience where you're working. If you're in Germany, if you're in America, if you're in uh, Switzerland, 
or any other country even if even if you're in kenya i was mobbing there are people mobbing you i was working there anyway guys we've come to the end of this video don't forget to like comment subscribe and to share and see you in the next video and don't forget to leave a comment if you're a nurse how are you coping in with this nursing because for me i'm almost at the 90 percent you know there is 100 like 0 to 90 to 100 now i have only that 10 percent patients remaining if i don't get along with the 10 percent i'm gonna stop doing nursing completely because nursing here in germany is so stressful or if i not if i'm gonna continue with it i'm gonna go back to the hospital because at least now if i go back to the hospital I'm, I'm aware of what i should be doing i'm not supposed to go there and look at someone i know what i'm supposed to do even if i go to any department i know most of the things right now so anyway guys um like i said leave a comment and share this video See you in the next one now. Penda Koirini and bye bye.